Hello everybody and welcome or welcome back to Risk of Rain 2. I've played this game a few times on my channel but the Survivors of the Void DLC just dropped and I want to at least put out a few episodes on my channel just to, for one, I really like playing this game, for two, just to let people know that I'm probably going to be streaming this a little more. This is definitely a game that I think I'm going to stream a lot um, and yeah, Survivors of the Void, if you haven't seen it, it's a pretty big DLC that adds two new survivors, three new stages, a bunch of new enemies, loads of new stuff, an entirely new mode and we're going to be jumping in as one of the new characters. I played around a little bit as this character yesterday when the DLC first came out. This is the real gunner. So uh, my old favourite classes were probably the Huntress or um, probably like Captain, Loader, um, but now real gunner speaks to me. This is basically a sniper. Uh, he's got some very interesting abilities. Um, all of his crit chance turns into critical strike damage because with his scope, his right click ability here, you can... Um I'm sorry, this one here, you can tr uh, track enemies like through walls and fire at their weak points, essentially their head, to do critical damage. You can also do perfect reloads for extra damage. It's it's pretty awesome. Then we've got the concussive blasts here, uh, the devices. These are basically going to be our movement skill as well as pushing enemies away from us. And then supercharge, which is going to be like the mega, mega shot that we use on like bosses and huge crowds. But anyways, let's jump right on in and see just what we might get. Uh, by the way... As I said, this character really speaks to me. Uh, for those of you that don't know, I'm an avid Call of Duty player. Uh, I mainly play Warzone now, but I've been playing uh, FPS games, first-person shooters, since I was seven years old. And I'm not going to say that I'm an absolute god at them, but I'm definitely pretty good, uh, considering I've been playing a long time. And this character relies mostly on aim. <laughs> yeah, so as you can see, there's enemies back over here, and we can see them through the wall. Uh, and then we've got like our little concussion mines. We can use them to move ourselves around. And then we could do a little crits like that. And then as you can see, when we fire, there's a bar. If we click during that bar, we get an active reload, which means we speed reload and we get bonus damage. So sort of getting to grips and getting a hang of that speed reload is very, very important. Uh, and I think I've gotten pretty good at it. Like I've gotten to the I've gotten to the point where I can time it most times pretty well. And as you can see, this character. In the early stages, also you get piercing there as well, is really strong. <laughs> this character can just like absolutely destroy. But we also do have um, an SMG mode here where we get like a light sort of weak homing shot um, to use on close range enemies or just enemies that are really hard to hit otherwise. A uh, good thing about this character as well, we can very easily scan for chests. We can just scope in and take a little look around. Doesn't seem like we have any here. Uh, I'm not really aiming for anything in particular in terms of a build. For those of you, by the way, that don't know Risk of Rain or are, are quite new to it, this is going to seem quite overwhelming to start with, so I do recommend that you go and watch some of my older episodes or watch some other people play some of the uh, earlier updates, because this is going to be kind of crazy. But all you need to know is um, the longer we spend in a stage, the harder the game gets. As you can see in the top right there, difficulty is increasing. Um, once you um, get enough money, you can open chests that are randomly located around the stage. They'll give you random items. Uh, and then once you've got enough items, or once you think you've got enough items, you can go to a teleporter that spawns in a random location, uh, activate it to spawn a boss. Once you kill that boss, you get an item. And then you have to charge up the teleporter by killing enemies nearby and you can leave to the next stage. Advancing to the next stage uh, does increase the difficulty as well by a certain amount. Okay, here we go. We've got some chests here. Uh, so you do have to sort of watch out for that. Uh, but, but generally, as long as I get out of the first stage within about five minutes. Ooh, this is really good. Get, uh, gain gold on taking damage. Pretty good. But yeah, as long as I get out of this first stage pretty early. Also, we have three 3D printers here. A 3D printer will take an item of the same uh, rarity color, so a white item. Oh, wait, this isn't a 3D printer. This is new. What the hell's this? Um... Yeah, it'll take an item and it will uh, swap it for the item that's on the pedestal. So if I put, if I use that, it take my roll of pennies and give me a war banner, which is actually probably a good idea. Thinking about it now, war banners uh, are really good. Whenever you level up, you you uh, basically spawn a big circle uh, where you're gonna deal more damage and get more fire rate and movement speed stuff like that. But anyways, let's see what the hell this is. Fifty percent health, and it gives us the lost seer lens. Gain 0.5 chance to insta kill a non boss enemy and corrupts all lens makers' glasses. Ah, I was told about these. So, essentially, these are corrupted items. Um, it's 
it's kind of not very good for us, I'll be honest. Lensmaker's glasses would give us crit damage um, but on this character, so hitting an enemy with a sniper shot would deal more damage. And 0.5 chance to, to insta-kill any non-boss enemy. Considering we one-shot most enemies right now isn't great. <laughs> Uh, so right, let's uh, let's uh, charge up this. Oh my god, I knocked myself off of the map, but I did. Oh no, I'm I'm gonna die. Oh my lord, I don't know what just happened there. I need to be very careful right now because I could die in a single hit. Healing drone, save me. <laughs> that was almost pretty bad. But as you can see, the charge up it disables your weaponry for a certain amount of time, but it's strong. It does it does a lot. <laughs> but yeah. As you can see, my accuracy is mostly on point, but we'll activate the teleport here. We'll charge up our uh, thing. We got a war banner as well. And as you can see, we just basically ripped off that entire health bar of that boss there. Right. Oh, I'm about to die. This guy is wrecking me. Okay, I'm really hoping this health drone can keep me going here. That fire dude was really not doing good things to me there. Right, let's uh, set up a blast again. And there you go, he's dead. We get ourselves our item, whatever that may be. Uh, ooh, get a delivery each stage that contains health items. That's a new item. I haven't seen that one before. We're almost ready to go. Item-wise, we're not we're not in a great spot. I just I'm, I'm a little upset with this lens maker's glasses thing because it's an item that for us is really not very good. For other classes, I can imagine it being really good. By the way, when it when it said corrupts, essentially lens maker's glasses is another item that gives a uh, crit chance. But now any lens maker's glasses we get will be um, just taken away from us. And in this game, items can stack. You can get multiple of the same item. So I'm wondering what this powerful reward is going to be this gift. Okay, so elites shouldn't spawn too early on here. We should be okay for my, for most part. What the hell's that thing? That's new. I was about to say elites aren't going to spawn, but now there's two elites and then there's a new elite. What the, the hell are these things? I've not seen these before. This is, this is part of the, uh, the void. Ooh, okay, so they have a shield, I see. And they drop whatever this thing is. What the hell's that? Oh, this is really intriguing. So they have a, a protection shield, but also it seems like that it's it's a little ah. This is really interesting. So it's like a creature that inhabits other enemies, meaning that once you kill it, you have to then kill it again. Otherwise, it's going to just try and inhabit another creature. Here's our first big chest. This chest contains a guaranteed green quality item. And we get ourselves instantly kill low health elite monsters. That's actually very good for us. Because the sniper shot is often going to leave elite enemies on low health. Especially in the later stages. They're really after my drones, aren't they? Damage upgrades. I'm not really sure what items would be good for us. But attack speed. Now, I do wonder how that works. Obviously, for our SMG, it'll clearly... What is that big bubble? It'll clearly just increase the speed that that fires, but I don't know if it'll do anything for our sniper. I don't know if it'll make it so that we uh, active reload quicker or whatnot. What the hell is this? What on earth is that? A lot of new stuff going on at the minute. Crack this sucker open. Oh, we're taking damage. Okay. Um... Okay, so this is a little scary. Hello, sir. Would you care to die? Right, so I guess we we need to crack all of these things open. I don't know how many of them there is. Okay, so here's the teleporter. For some reason, at this stage, the teleporter always spawns here or very close to here. Ooh, what's this? Is it just a free item? No, oh, okay. <laughs> like a crashed ship with a free item in it. Uh, let, let's try and look for some items before we interact with that. Ooh, backup magazine. That gives you... Um, more uses of your mouse 2 ability, which is actually our sniper scope, so... Honestly, looking at our white items, I don't have anything I care about, so... Apart from my war banners, I'd like to keep my war banners. Okay, so let's make ourselves some space here. Okay, so... 
basically now what we can do is we can scope in and go boom, boom, boom. Which I don't know if that means we'll get the active reload damage. Okay, this seems to be over now. Hmm, okay. Maybe I missed my opportunity with this thing? I don't know what it was. Whoa, what the hell's this? Release uh, void potential. Whoa, what the hell? I'll take whatever this is. Okay. Okay. That's pretty interesting. Right, I don't think we're finding many more chests this stage, I'll be honest. There is one over here. You can still buy, um, buy stuff from chests after you kill the boss, but it's just better to do it before. Okay, we've got a shield generator here. Rather nice. As you can see as well, all of our items actually visually appear on our character's body. I think that's really cool on, on, uh, with this game. Obviously, Isaac does that as well, but in this game, it's just a bit more impactful because it's in a 3D space. Where's the boss? I, cha I charged up a mega shot. Where the hell is the boss? Is it behind this wall? Ah, oh, you bastard. It's not fair. Yeah, there you go. And then we take our leave and we'll come back later on and do another one of those. We've got 15 seconds, so if we take just about 15 seconds to get all the way back around this. There's a lot going on over there. A lot of big beetle guards. Right, we've, we've got it back. There's a lot of beetle guards going on here. Oh my god. I didn't actually do much damage. I think I missed its critical spot. Oh, it was bent over. That's why. There you go. We got it. Right, so now our item will spawn. And we need to kill all these guys. So, what item we got here? I think that's Gorm's turn. That's going to give us a bit more gold. Nice. We also got a blue portal here as well. Uh, blue portals essentially take you to an extra stage where you can get lunar items. So, we'll do that. Hello. Right. So, here we've got some good stuff. Right. Refresh shop. Interesting. So, as you can see, I've got 303 lunar coins. They're essentially a meta currency. I don't know what some of these are, and that scares me. I know for a fact I want this, because this is always good. Essentially, when you have an active item, it automatically um, fires it, but it reduces the cooldown. The hell's this? See, it's difficult, because I don't want to absolutely brick my run. Because if I take this and it replaces one of my abilities, it's going to be real bad. I'll try it. Items and equipment have a small chance to transfer into lunar items instead. Okay, okay, that's actually pretty decent. And here we can trade items in for other stuff. Now, this is new. Um, I don't have five green items, unfortunately. What I'll do is I'll trade three I'll trade three of these for a band. And then five of these for whatever this is. This is a legendary item. And we got ourselves... Become immune to all debuffs and increase max health. That is incredible. Okay. Right. Um... Pop this. I need to get myself some more Lunar Coins. I, I think the refresh... It might not be new to this update, but it's definitely new to me. Right, let's go. I said I dream of Brimstone, so I'm uh, curious of where this is going to take us. And if we go back through the portal... We can go down. There's like some stuff down there as well. But I don't think we need to do that right now. There's a lot of stuff in this game that's like optional that I haven't really done much of that I probably should do more of. Oh, this is new. The Sulphur Pools. I've never seen this stage before. Okay, well, I still have three shots in my backup magazine, so that's okay. Right, something I need to test. So if I if I go boom and do an active reload, I get one shot at 1,000 damage. Next shot is okay. So unfortunately, you ha I have to active reload each shot. So backup magazine, while useful, isn't great. Because we're not getting the bonus damage. These enemies are really cool looking as well. Never seen these before. Whoa! There's a lot of new enemies here. A lot of new enemies. These guys seem like sort of the little crabs from the from the last stage. The ones that like fire mortar rounds at you, if anyone remembers those dudes. Kind of seemed like those, but more kind of turrety. I'm surprised our healing drones are still alive considering the beating they've been taking. Oh, enemies with fl uh, stages with flying enemies, sorry, are going to be all like really good for us because 
We just excel at firing at uh, flying creatures. Ooh, what's this? Oh, this is the healing the healing champion. It can heal its allies, like heal other enemies, but at the same time, if you kill it, it drops a little healing pod that will heal you. This is a really cool looking stage. I'm very into this. We're definitely at the point now where we could use some additional damage. But yeah, if we, if we open this chest now, and, and this as well, it's gonna fire off fireworks. Get us off a lunar item here. Um, half your cooldowns, but half your attack speed. I'm actually, I actually think that's really, really good for us. Halving our cooldowns. I don't know if that affects our active item or just our uh, just our normal items. But we don't need fire it. I don't think. Okay, it does significantly hurt our um, our ability to use our uh, backup magazines. But otherwise, pretty good. Pretty good. We'll keep moving on. Yeah, so like having having the uh, fire rate is giving us a way bigger ease of use on our active reload. But now we can't fire at like full speed, which for me is terrible. Okay, not too many enemies about now. Let's activate this. Okay, we're at the point now where we've got double bosses. Shouldn't be too problematic. But at the same time, it's not exactly going to be a cakewalk here. Especially with this attack going on right now. God, our fire rate is so bad now. Oh my god. This is the problem with not knowing items in a game like this. You take things, especially lunar items. Lunar items always have like a pretty drastic downside. Oh god, I might die here. This is overwhelming. There's so many enemies and I don't really have any good way of dispatching them all. Even charging up this takes much longer. This is really bad. I think I might die here. This item has ruined me. <laughs> Lunar items are never a good idea if you don't know what they do. It's all these dudes as well that are problematic. Like, like there's, there's things healing this boss as well. Yeah, there you go. We're dead. Unfortunately, that item completely ruined us. But we're going to give it another go. We're going to carry on. We're going to try again. And we actually do get another... Uh, we actually do get another stage here. Nice. This is new. I have seen this one once before when I was testing. But otherwise, this is new to this update. Ooh, movement speed right off the bat there would be so good. Right, so at the minute we can kind of just sit on high and wait for enemies to approach. Enemies will start spawning sort of closer to us. What are those guys over there doing? And then we'll probably, probably afford Goat Hoof now, right? Yep. Movement speed. That was something we didn't really have in our last run. Um, I don't think that's what got us killed, but still. It's very nice to have it now. We've got a tri-tip dagger 3D printer there. And then... Let's move along this. We got ourselves an equipment uh, thing here. We definitely want some equipment. Okay. I, I, th th this stage is, uh, like definitely holds some secrets. All right, 25 for an active. We'll definitely wait on that. And we get ourselves... Great Quantum Tunnel. Basically, this is just a portal gun, essentially. It's not very good. It's okay, but I don't really care for it too much. We'll wait up here because we've got another chest up here. Like I said, enemies will spawn around us anyways. Obviously, it's a little slow to start. That is one one problem I've always thought this game has. Its early game pacing is just really slow. Even on the harder difficulties, it's still very slow. But otherwise, I love this game. Okay, so attack speed. This is good. So now we know that attack speed does indeed affect our sniping abilities. 
we need to be very careful. Obviously, lowering it by that much is going to be very rare. Apart from with that one item, or maybe maybe there's a few others that lower fire rate, but there's not not many that I know of. All right, we do have another chest sort of down over here, right? Okay, there's a lunar pod over there that could give us a lunar item. Like I said, I will check on lunar items, but I'm not going to take ones I don't know anymore. Oh, we got another one of these. This could be interesting. Let's see what we get this time. This time we get... Chance to collapse enemies on hit corrupts all tri-tip daggers. So that's good because we don't have any tri-tip daggers. Oh, also there's one of these dudes. What the hell's this? Calm down, you guys. There's an enemy just here. This is one another one of these void beetles. Oh no, it's just you. Okay. Let's see what we get. Got an active that I don't care about. Basically, you're always looking for the fossil and nothing else. Oh, okay. That's the collapsing thing going on there. I do wonder what the collapsing part does to other enemies. I don't, don't know if it just means we kill the enemies that we're shooting quicker, or if it's going to mean that enemies around them are going to take some extra damage. I'd expect it's going to do some extra damage around. Ooh, legendary item. Uh... Healing past full grant you a temporary barrier. While not amazing right now, we can certainly build towards that. We don't have any, like, strong healing abilities right now, so that doesn't really fit in. But early game getting a legendary is never bad. Got another uh, big chest here. How about another legendary? Oh, -ho -ho! Luck is on your side. This is amazing. 57 Leaf Clover. Essentially, any effect that has a chance to trigger, if it fails, it then rolls again to try and trigger. So, this chance to collapse enemies thing, if it doesn't succeed, it will try again and then try and succeed. So, basically, you've got two chances for enemies to collapse rather than just the one. It basically doubles all the chances of every on-hit effect to trigger. Real good. Lens makers is really good. It's going to increase our uh, damage when we hit a critical, which is whenever we hit an enemy's weak spot or its face. Damn it. It's, I do that so often where I like, shoot underneath an enemy. Right. Still got a few more chests about here, but we know where the, t the teleporter is this time. We don't have to look around for it too much. A lot of these things. These are just a little bit extra money. Look at that. Shot right under his legs. It's a testament to how good the hitboxes are in this game. I'll say that. Ooh. Okay. So that's a bit different than what I was expecting. Apparently, I can stack up this collapse on enemies. That's intriguing. There's another chest. Let's just check the upper level of this first. There you go. We, we definitely want healing items, so these chests are pretty valuable to us now. Can't believe we've got two legendaries. Yeah, that's really good. So yeah, enemies that we don't one-shot are going to be the ones that are mainly affected here. Why can't I hit these beetles? My accuracy is letting me down right now. Alright, crack that open. But later on, we might end up seeing that um, the collapse be a bit more impactful. Right now, it's it's kind of passive because we don't really use our SMG that much. I don't know about other players that are playing this right now or just like, people in general. I don't know how much people end up using their... Oh, ukulele is great as well. Electric shots. Um, end up using their SMG, but I very rarely use it. I probably should use it a little more. Probably one of the reasons I, I, I die so much as this guy or like die early on. But I just love the sniper so much. Right, anyways, let's get this going. We'll charge up a shot. I love that damage. Yeah, there you go. So the collapse is on him now. Ah! Interesting. Okay, so the collapse is essentially like a delayed strike. If we leave it on an enemy for long enough, they'll explode for collapse damage. So, like, if we do this here, ukulele's going to be so good with this. And then these guys, we leave them. Yeah, okay, I like that. I like that a lot. Chrono Bubble's pretty good here as well, slowing effects. 
Okay, so yeah, let's try and let's try and utilize the SMG a little more this run, especially now we have some pretty viable skills that work well with it. Should not be ignored. Let's have a Luna coin. Like, look at that. And his music was electric. But we have a really good build for the SMG this time. I thought I heard someone else. Is there a... You can always scan for enemies here, like, just... No, there's no enemies in the distance. I see you there. I'm essentially just trying to stack a collapse on an enemy and then leave them. Oh, did you see that? The ukulele proc when we shot that dude. Ukulele, I don't know if it, it translates your exact damage, but it translates some of your damage into an electric beam that triggers on multiple enemies. The more ukuleles you have, the further it can chain. Okay, back to this area again. What's the best of the teleporters just behind this pillar? Yeah, so for some reason, it almost always is. It's not every time, but it's always somewhere around here. Hmm? Hmm? Looking rather blank. Okay, we got a three, no, uh, a three choice thing here. This could be pretty good taking Bandolier here. Extra damage to bosses. Seems promising. I did see a big guy somewhere over here. Okay, got you. Right, let's grab Bandolier. Yeah, Bandali is extra damage to bosses. I th I think it's 20% per one as well. That's like really good. Basically, the more of those we can get, the higher the chance we've got of one-shotting a boss, which is basically our ultimate goal. <laughs> Another chest down here. I'm loving the scope just for scouting. Like this game is like got sort of like I said, a few problems with it being a bit slow early on, but also another problem is just finding chests because they're completely random. Sometimes they can be really, really hard to find. Yeah, it does seem like it's translating pretty much all of our damage to other enemies. Nice, a war banner. War banner's always great to get early. Yeah, this, okay, ukulele with this setup is pretty incredible. Let's go find some more, uh, some more chests. Work our way around the perimeter here. Let's see, I'm not seeing any chests right here. We should be using these a little more as movement as well. They are pretty valuable for that. Ooh, I missed that one up a bit. <laughs> also, the recharge on them is pretty quick too. Okay, no chests there. I do see something over there. 3D printer there. And that's a, uh, a goat hoof there. No, it's a backup magazine. Okay, so we know the backup magazine is good, but not necessary for at least the way that I play this character. Like they, they are, they are definitely strong, but I'd, I'd rather just do the active reload. But yeah, the, the 57 leaf clover is increasing our chance. Ooh, this is multiple bosses. Definitely do this. Get extra items, but extra bosses. Um, it's also increasing our chance for the ukulele to strike. So really good on that front as well. Teddy bear's a chance to negate damage. I think we should definitely take that. And then we've got... I think this is... Yeah, I'll take this. Basically, this is increased damage. But if we drop below a certain amount of health, it breaks forever. So it's a pretty risky item. But if you can keep your health in a good spot, then it's fine. Got another he healing chest to be our best friend here. We want as much healing as we can. If we can get leeching seed, which is basically heal on hit, that would be so good for our um, over, our, like he over shield healing thingy that we've got going on. We've also got a big chest over there as well. We got a lot of med kits, which is actually very good for that watch that we just got. Med kits essentially mean when we get hit, we're going to get a burst of healing a few seconds later. With three of them, the burst of healing is going to be pretty large, meaning that we shouldn't ever drop below that health threshold unless it's in a single hit. We are dealing a lot more damage now as well. This is good. Right, how much is this? I'm guessing it'll be 200 and something. Oh, no. Okay. Um, kill enemy gives you a best movement speed. That's really good. And then we got another chest over here. Ooh, one moment. I'm getting a call. I am back. I received a scam call. Goddamn. 
<laughs> so funny. So I've been getting like tons of scam calls recently. I don't know like what website or what thing that I put my phone number on, but I obviously put my phone number somewhere and they have sold it to a lot of people because I'm getting a lot of calls right, right now. And they're all for the exact same scam. It's really, really funny. They, they ring you and they offer you a phone contract. Um, and it's, it's, every time I, I, I play along with their little riddle and they were like, oh, um, what's your name? Can you please spell it out for me? And I just said my name was Bob Scam. <laughs> and I was like spelling out Scam. And she was like, your last name's Scam. Is that true? I was like, yes. I, you, you, you gotta believe me, right? I mean, I believe that you're selling me a phone legitimately. And she was like, hmm, okay, bye. <laughs> it's like, yeah, bye. Fuck you. Get a career that isn't defrauding people, you piece of shit. Okay, so this is, uh, bad. <laughs> oh, what? I one-shot that dude. What the hell? Okay, that's awesome. Yeah, okay, so this character d definitely is not very good against, uh, Dune Striders. We might end up losing our watch here, I'll be honest. There's another one dead. Whoa, this guy's healing a lot. Okay, ukulele's helping me a lot right now. Let's just uh, start using our SMG here because it's going to be very, very useful for us right now. Okay, we got him. And we get two items here. Hey, double herpu feathers. Now we get triple jump. That's super useful for, like, negating fall damage. I'm just getting around in general. But yeah, goddamn. I don't know why I'm getting so many from recently, but I just said, hey, look, I've had, like, six of these calls in the past week. Like... And also, like, not to stereotype, but when you get a call from an Indian person and you can hear there's multiple other people talking in the background, you kind of know it's already a scam. Like, I know that like there's, there's definitely like Indian people that do legitimately do telesales, but unfortunately, they have set themselves quite a bad example, being like the number one country for for phone scams. It's a shame, really. I actually work with quite a lot of people from India that are very very pleasant and very very nice. It's just a shame that a few bad eggs have to ruin the reputation of a, of a country. I'm not saying that I think everyone in India is a scammer, but you know what I mean. A lot of people associate them. Okay, so this is this void thing again. Should we try and do this this time? I don't know what happened last time, I'll be honest. Oh, it can break. What the hell? Hmm. Yeah, I don't, I don't really know what's going on here. I, I destroyed both the things that were in here. I didn't even know I could do that. There was a big chest somewhere around here, wasn't there? Okay, there it is. More legendaries. Damn it. Ooh, this is good, though. When we're sprinting, we get reduced uh, damage taken. Rather nice. I should really start using my... Um, my active a little more. I used it very wrong there. Okay, so this is the stage we died on last time. So we'll see if we befall the same fate. Just don't get too overwhelmed. This time we have a much better AoE-based build with this ukulele and clover setup we got going on. So we shouldn't be as... Uh, it shouldn't have as bad of a time. Uh, Actually, yeah, I think we'll take the capacitor if we can afford it. Boom. Boom. I've uh, not quite got enough yet. Boom. Boom. I see a blobby boy. Right. Take the capacitor. Is, that, is this capacitor? Yeah. Royal capacitor is so good. This is the item that you need. The, uh, the thing that we had last run. The, the fossil. It's really good with the fossil. But yeah, we can do that, and it'll just lightning strike an enemy. 
Basically, it's like a free sniper shot. Right, let's make our way over here. We can actually drop one of them down there and blast us off up here. Oh, we got one of these dudes. Okay, let's just do that on him. Oh, that blocked the damage. I forgot about that. Okay, oh no, it did, it did create one of these creatures. There we go, we got it. A little bit risky with those things. But they're pretty, they're pretty slow. Like, they're, they're not slow moving, but they're, they're pretty slow to find new prey. I thought it'd be a bit quicker than that. We do have ourselves this here. Unfortunately, we don't have any boss items. The yellow items are items you can only get from specific bosses. We do not currently have any of those. Right, let's keep running around, see what we can get. I'm hearing mechanical noises. There, there they are. I wonder what the hell it was, and then I remembered we've been seeing these triangle boys for a while. Another lunar item there. We definitely want to check the lunar items out. Just because um, it could end up being that uh, fossil again. Unfortunately, it's just another active. Look at the damage we're doing, even with our SMG. It's really good. I'm really liking the setup we've got right now. Okay, we've got some more items over here. Okay, so here's this thing. It's doing damage to us over time, but I, I just don't really get the point in it. Like, that did a lot of damage to me, but there seems to be nothing to gain from this. I guess I'm just really missing out on something. Oh, it could be underground, actually. There's, like, an underground bit there. Let's go check that out. Let me get these chests first. Crowbar. Oh, Crowbar's god tier as his character. Enemies above 90% HP take more damage. Obviously, as this character, the sniper shots, it basically means the sniper shots are more guaranteed to one shot. Oh, crits healers, that's also incredible as this character, because now we can get that overheal shield going a little easier. All right, so let's go underground and see what's going on down there, because there's clearly something down there. Okay, is it this? Oh, whoa, 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 there's, there's two of these. Corrupts all bustling fungus. Heal while sprinting. Okay, we've got some really good stuff going on this run. Really good stuff. I definitely want to use this other one as well. Oh, another one? Awesome. We have a very good setup right now. Okay, so here's the last one of these things, I think. So that, that big aura's gone now. Ooh, we've got another legendary here. Um, is this the jump one? Okay. I think this is the jump one, isn't it? Increased jump height, hold interact to slam down. It's not that great, but it's, it's pretty decent. The, the jump height is more so the important part of it to me. Chance Shrine, don't fail me now. God damn it, Chance Shrine. I'm gonna be this way. Right, so do you, does anyone remember where the teleporter was? Because I don't. Whoa, our jump height's crazy. Okay, it's over there. I see it. Yeah, our jump height's really crazy now. This is good. Especially considering we've got triple jump. Because we can, like, jump off really high things and just jump before we hit the ground to negate fall damage. So let's see how the SMG fares against this guy. It's not great, but the, the void attack thing is really strong. Hey, you're dead. Then we got one more Beetle Queen somewhere. I don't know where it is, actually. Oh, it's down here. Okay. 
Yeah, that's that's good damage. That's a lot of macaron. Well, let's stack up as much of this effect on him as we can, and then we're good to go. And we get another uh, Fandalia. I thought it was another Herpu Feather. Fandalia's pretty good. We can refresh our abilities by killing enemies, essentially. Um, I don't really know um, how well this overshield thing's working, but I've not really seen it do anything yet. It's meant to be like a gold bar on your health bar, but if you take a look, like, it's very small and very infrequent. I thought we'd be getting uh, it stacked up a little more often. Maybe we just need more healing. Yeah, now we've embraced the SMG, I think we're having a much better time with this character. A close range is still a very, very good option. It's pretty awesome. I might do a super cut of this episode and, like, cut out parts of the first run, because this, this run's much better. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll see about doing that. Anyways, let's back out of here. Boom. See where it takes us next. Hey, the Abyssal Depths. This is the, the OG, the OG last stage. Not the last stage anymore, but it is the OG last stage. This, this used to be where you went before you looped. This, also, this is also a good stage because that's a guaranteed legendary uh, crate on it, so we can try and get that. It's just under here, I believe. Oh, hello. Big MP boy. Yeah, it's just there, look. Well, this guy has, like, multiple, um, multiple crit spots. I think all of his eyes count as crit spots. He does have a healing something or other next to him. Who is it? Oh, it's you. Got you. Where you at, boy? Okay, we've almost got him. Oh ho ho, a lot of damage. And we got him. That's just not, that's not a, a normal boss, by the way. That's that's just like a, a random spawn boss. So we got three grand out of that. I think the crate is normally about five. It does scale depending on what difficulty you're on and stuff. So we'll have to see. Oh wait, we can afford it already, nice. And we get ourselves, ooh, nice. Killing enemies uh, surround you with an ice storm. That's very useful because this this character, we don't have great close range capabilities. The SMG's fine, but it's not amazing. Um, so now this is going to help us with close range a little bit. For whom the bells holes. Right. Where are we looking? I don't know what I just killed, but I killed something. We can actually look for these little dudes a little more often now, the crab guys. God damn. What do you have? 3.4k damage a hit. We're doing like 1k earlier. Another lens makers makes that even more as well. Big boy crate here. Beautiful. Hey, instantly kill low health elites. That's really good for us. We got that last time. Very happy with that. Very happy with that indeed. Right, where are we going? Our, cr our crates still don't cost that much. We've made it here a pretty good time. Right, where are the enemies? One over there, there's one up there, one here. I'm really liking this ability to easily find these little crab fuckers. They're really annoying, they just basically fire like mortar rounds at you, but they're like buried into the ground, so they're really hard to find normally. And now, super easy to find. I do not want to use this shrine, it'll spawn a bunch of enemies that I do not want to deal with right now. Let's see if we can find some chests. There's some over here. There's definitely a green um, triple pick shop up there. I see you little fuckers. 
another one of these. Personal shield generators aren't all that good, if I remember correctly, because if you have more than, like, three of them, which is what I have right now, um, they can mess you up. Ooh, another one of these. I'm all in for these new void items. There's another one down here as well. The heck? Uh, corrupts all rusted keys. Gain access to encrusted cash containing a void item. Uh, wait, what? The heck? Killed by squid turret? They're mine! <laughs> Anyways, I guess I don't have to cut out that first run, because uh, we're dead here. That was a very interesting little run we had going on there. I am a little upset that I died before I could check out that encrusted key, but... That was very fun. I hope you guys enjoyed. And yeah, I will uh, hopefully see you guys in the next one. If people like this, I'll definitely do more of it. And as I said, I will be streaming more of this as well. Hope you guys enjoyed. See you guys in the next one.